Representatives from uh, uh, Assemblyman Perez's office and the City of Indio. As Kim said, we did invite everybody. We invited all of the county supervisors. We invited everybody from Riverside County Department of Animal Services um, and from the City of Indio. So just to get that out there, um, really appreciate you being here. This is the whole point of this is for everybody to be able to talk about what's going on because up to now it has not been. People have been, I think, afraid to really say anything, and they weren't really sure who they would say anything to because the very people who are supposed to be protecting them are the ones who are not. Um, I practice in the area of animal law, specifically animal shelter law and animal control law. Um, last June, the City Council of Indio made some major changes to the way they handled their animal issues. They decided to close their own shelter, and on June 16th, the City Council voted to adopt the Riverside County Animal Ordinances. It's 61 pages of laws, but they didn't tell you. I guess they forgot to mention it. I don't know. To this day, it's not on their website. Right there, the, the, the small print at the top in black is what's on their website about animals and dog licensing. It tells you that you can get your license for, licenses from the County of Riverside right now. It doesn't tell you that you are now subject, or since last June, have been subject to a number of requirements they didn't tell you about. Um, they claim, apparently, that they sent out some information with some water bills. I believe that the information in the water bills simply said that Riverside County was going to be handling the licenses. That's not enough. That's not nearly enough information. That's not notice. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to tell you that Riverside County is going to be handling licenses, but it's another thing entirely to tell you there's a whole new set of laws that apply to Indio residents. They didn't tell you. They left out the most important, the most important information, and that's why you're all here. They didn't mention that you'd be required to do several things that were not previously required for years. You know, as of last June, you're subject to all the laws of Riverside County, which also is mandatory spay neutering, mandatory microchipping. That's an important piece of information because they're now citing you for that. It would have been so easy for them to tell you. You know, I don't know why they didn't. The, the tactics they're employing right now for enforcement are just cruel and unnecessary. They really are. They're cruel and unnecessary not only to humans but to animals. They don't need to impound more animals and kill more animals. That's not in anybody's interest. And they don't need to be trying to extract exorbitant fees from people. It, it does border on extortion. It does. 
You can't take somebody's animals or, or threaten to take somebody's animals or threaten to do things to them to get them to surrender animals or whatever it is, or even to try to get money from them. It is obviously about, about animals, but it's also about civil rights. This really is a civil rights issue. Because the way these laws are being enforced violates, it, it violates the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. The Constitution guarantees you the right not to be deprived of property without due process of the law. And a crucial element of due process is notice. You must be notified of what the laws are before you can be charged with violating them. They cannot subject you to a whole bunch of new laws, not tell you, and not inform you anywhere, and then say, oh, guess what? You violated it. You have to pay us money, or we're going to take your animals. We don't do that in America. It's a really simple pro It's a simple thing, and I don't know why they didn't do it. Um, you know, there's just, there's basic, there's rudimentary information on their websites. There's virtually, you know, there's almost nothing on Riverside County as well. In fact, one section of Riverside County Department of Animal Services website specifically says that Riverside County Department of Animal Services encourages people to spay and neuter. It doesn't say they require it, it says encourages. That's not a matter of semantics. Those are very, very different words. So which is it? Is it required or encouraged? That's a very contradictory statement to saying it's required and issuing citations for a lot of money for not having it done. I've seen several of these citations. One of them, or a couple that I've seen, have been posted at someone's house. One of them is issued, the ticket is issued to animal owner, which makes it pretty obvious that somebody wasn't home when he got this ticket. Um, the, the officer wrote him an $819 ticket anyway. The property owner or animal owner was cited $100 each for each dog for not having a license, not having proof of rabies, not having a microchip, and not spaying and neutering of two dogs. That, does, that raises a lot of questions. For example, how would that officer know that the dogs aren't licensed just by looking at them in the backyard? How does he know that? How would he know that those dogs don't have rabies vaccinations? How would he know they don't have microchips? I mean, is this they have x-ray vision? I don't know. How could you tell that they were spayed or not? You can't tell that from looking if it's a girl. Boy, a little different question, but. But apparently that doesn't matter. They're just gonna give you some fines anyway. I talked to somebody earlier tonight who had citations, who does have spayed animals. She was cited anyway. This doesn't even begin to make sense. I'm also told that animal control is saying if you can't afford to pay the fines, you can go ahead and surrender your animals. Really? That's crazy, and it's not okay. It really makes me wonder what the real motivation is behind this. If this were about, if this were really about what's best for animals and, 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 and engaging the community and education and trying to lower animal populations, they would be working with the community because it's just as easy to canvas these neighborhoods. It's just as easy to go out and issue a warning or a notice along with information in English and in Spanish, but useful information on how you can procure these services. You can't use these sort of draconian measures to just railroad people into, into you know, either giving money or animals. You just can't. Especially when you, haven't, when you haven't even told them what the rules are. You can't change the rules and then say, okay, you violated them all. But I, I don't think this is motivated by, by animal welfare. I really don't. It's not. It's something else. I'm not sure what it is, I can guess. It's money, it's power, it's control, it's bullying, it's intimidation, and it's abuse of power flat out. I don't think it's coincidental that animal control is, is targeting low-income neighborhoods. They are using, I see this a lot in California. They're targeting people who are the least able to defend themselves or who, think that, who they think will not. They will not go to the more affluent neighborhoods in large part because those people have gates and lawyers. You know, they, they're giving 20 days to, to comply with these provisions. How? How are you supposed to comply with these provisions? How are you supposed to make an appointment to get an animal spayed or neutered, especially when you've got to shell out $1,600 plus that $19 administrative fee, or $2,000 or $1,200 to pay the fine, or run the risk of that fine doubling overnight because they're telling people we're coming back, and it's going to be a second offense at $200 a piece now, $200 per violation, so your $400 for one animal just went up to $800. And they expect people to be able to pay for spay and neutering and microchips? It doesn't make sense. The whole thing has to stop. This has to stop. It's not okay.
And it's, it's not okay to scare people and intimidate people and threaten to do things to people. I've lived in a country like this before. I mean, I lived overseas for years and I know what it's like to be more afraid of law enforcement than I am of, the, of anyone else. And I know what it's like to feel like that they can come to my house at any point in time with uniforms and deport me or worse, lock me up. So I know exactly what it's like to be terrified to come forward and say anything. And that's why we invited you here tonight, because we want you to know that this is a safe place to discuss this. It needs to be out on the table. It needs to be addressed openly and honestly without fear of reprisal. So with that, it's up to you. That's
walk on your property, they get the dogs to bark, and so they can they can cite you to collect money. This is just tax collectors. They're, they don't care about the dogs. Because what's going to happen? People are, can't afford this. My father-in-law can't afford this. What are they going to do? Surrender the dogs so they can be destroyed. Is that the goal of the county? Well, you know, I urge all of you to contact the supervisors of Benoit and anybody else who voted for this and tell them, have your family members call them. It works, the phone calls work. If each of you got your family members to call, I, I guarantee you, Benoit's office would be issuing a statement tomorrow morning. They talk about this dog academy they have built out there that's broke. That's probably why they're, the motivation is to start collecting fees. They, they built this enormous facility for, for dogs. Now, I love dogs, but they probably spent over a million, million dollars, maybe two, to build this thing. Lastly, shame. Shame on City of India and the City Council who dumped their problem on the county a bigger government because they didn't have the courage to do the right thing for their community. So they got bigger brother to do their dirty work. Shame on you, City of Indio Council. I live in Indio and I'm a business owner in Indio and I happen to be a dog trainer out of Indio. Now, me as a dog trainer, as a professional in this community, I had no idea about these new laws. Why wouldn't an animal professional know the new laws that are put out for the community of India? Why don't I know? Because they didn't let anybody know. I used to work for the county. I used to be the behaviorist. I know exactly how the county works. I know a lot of things about the county that a lot of people would be very unhappy with. And because I am an ex-employee, I don't dare stand up and speak because what will I be? I will be a disgruntled ex-employee, right? Anything I have to say will be just lies, no truths. That's how I will be looked at, okay? But there's a reason why I'm no longer with the county, okay? So, I think as a community, we really do need to stand up. I love what this gentleman just said as far as passing the buck to another government agency and putting that pressure on, okay? It's just, none of this is okay. We have such a huge problem in this desert of animals being destroyed. I understand this gentleman doesn't believe that animals should have this nice facility. Uh, they should have the nice facility. We do have a lot of people that are in need, but animals are in need as well. So we do kind of have to balance this out. And what the county could be doing is working with the public, just like our group has been doing, can. We've been doing the job of the county and the city. We're getting animals fixed. We're getting animals microchipped and shots. Why aren't the county and the city doing this? We're paying our tax dollars. I paid my license fees. Why is nobody stepping up and offering these programs? Why do we have to offer these programs for the low-cost people? They showed up at my house after the news report, by the way. I just want to be clear on that one because it was after the news report that they showed up at my door. Dogs barked. The gentleman said, oh, well, that just answered my first question. And I said, yes, I have dogs. And he said, are they licensed? And I said, yes, let me get the license for you. Oh, no, no, what's your name? I'll look it up. Well, if you can look it up, why are you coming to my door? You know, we've got, we've got these computer systems that can target certain salespeople, certain addresses that we can put out flyers to, to try to sell them. But the county can't pull up people that have actually licensed their animals, and they're, you know, they're wasting our tax dollars, number one, to come to our homes, and you're harassing somebody that's following the law. I have followed the law, and I still have to have somebody come to my door, like everybody's saying, a Gestapo, making you uncomfortable, getting my dogs crazy, you know, and it's just ridiculous. There's better ways of handling this situation. I'm actually from a rescue group that's located up here in Desert Hot Springs. We have the same issue going on. This is not just your city issue. Your city, as well as Desert Hot Springs, 
needs to stand up to the county. I've actually personally just moved from San Diego myself. I didn't know about the current situation going on until I was notified by my partner in rescue. I want to advise all of you, when an officer shows up at your door, it's your property that they're showing up to. You have right still to protect your property. As soon as they step foot on your property, they are in violation without a search warrant, no matter if you have a gate or not. So be careful about what you say, about what you do with these officers on your property. Your dogs are your family members, the way I look at them. When they take my son, my daughter, my dogs, you have an issue with me. Um, this is for Marla more than anything. I was one of those that nobody was home and your property owner. Yeah. And our dog was actually fixed and we've got records and everything, but he wasn't shipped with a license. Uh, three days later, I get a letter in the mail, three or four days later. And now I have the breed of my dog listed, little pit bull, but not pit bull, lost him here. Yeah. Looks like a baby pit bull. But then it says, and this is, if you fail to correct these violations, any and all fines and penalties will be forwarded to the appropriate appropriate authority, i.e. Franchise Tax Board or DMV. Yeah. On the flip side, what the county is trying to do is a good thing. And we'd be really, really mad at them because I think the way they're doing it stinks. But what they're trying to do is really good because if we can get the supply and demand of animals in balance in those huge shelters won't need to be killing 57% of them that come in the door. I'm actually here shooting a video of this event, partially for a documentary that I'm doing on these exact issues, because like speakers before have said, Indio is not the first city where this is happening, it won't be the last. These are tactics that people routinely use in animal control. I'm, I'm basically up here to speaking to try to encourage more of you to come up and speak about um, what you're dealing with. I, I know it, it, it might be difficult, maybe you've never spoke in front of a crowd before, neither have I, before I started um, advocating for shelter dogs three years ago, four years ago. Um, the, the bottom line is, silence allows this type of stuff to continue. When people do not do anything, that gives animal control the right to keep doing what they're doing, and what they're doing is criminal. Now, that's not a blanket statement, it may sound like one. There's plenty of people, well, I wouldn't say plenty, but there's, there's enough people in animal control that may be good, but what they're doing to you guys is ridiculous, and it's amounting into, into dead dogs, your pets. Not just random dogs, they're your pets. This, this legislation overnight made everybody here criminals, basically, without you even knowing that it existed. That's not, that's not a way to work with the community. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to hear people come up here and, and, and give the shelter props. Is the shelter here? They're not here. Animal control is not here. Robert Miller's not here. He's a bad guy. So I'll say it again. Robert Miller is a bad guy. In order to work with the community, you have to embrace them. A lot of you guys are low income. I'm low income. This is California. I mean, it's expensive. You got to make these, these services available to people and then give them the ability to cash in on those services. Some people don't have transportation. Some people work seven days a week. Some people have multiple kids. A lot of people have multiple dogs. This is difficult to give people 20 days to comply. is ridiculous. It's absurd. If someone wanted to comply tomorrow, they call to make an appointment, they wouldn't even be able to get in, in to inside of the 20-day window, so you're automatically violating that, with that while, while trying to comply. Robert Miller's not here to explain that away. The, the, the notion that 
low-income communities or communities in general wouldn't take advantage of resources is completely false and a lie. This organization right here in July of last year put on a free spay and neuter clinic where they have 40 available spots and more than 500 people showed up. That should be on the news. I believe it was on the channel, but that should be on every channel because you guys are being violated. You guys are being demonized. They're coming to your house and saying, y'all are criminals. When, when for what? They're already doing a poor job at the shelter. They already have dogs that they're not rehoming. They're killing them. Instead, they're going to your house, taking your pets, killing the dogs that they have to make room for your pets, and then they're gonna kill your pets. And I'm sorry I'm fired up, but this is a passion of mine, and I want to inspire more people to speak up because without your testimony, that means the evidence doesn't exist and we need evidence. We know what's going on. Robert Miller in Riverside County just put out a press release like an hour ago saying they weren't citing people. They only cited people for $16. No, every one of you guys brought citations. We have the proof, we copied them. These are 400, 800, 1200, 1600, 2000 plus dollars and they double if they come back. He's, he's, he's put out a press release saying he's only citing for $16. I don't think so. He's a very disingenuous man. We are here to call him out on his BS. And last thing I'll say is there's nothing in Spanish. Thank you. Indios, Indio, while doing research, is 70% Hispanic. There's nothing in Spanish. There's nothing on the website in Spanish. There's no translation option. This should tell you something. They don't care about fixing these issues. In order to resolve this mega, mega issue, it's going to take Robert Miller leaving his position. Well, it's not gonna be voluntarily because I don't believe he has a conscience. Intimidation is not cool. Embracing the community is what's cool and that's not what's being done. So instead of helping you guys, they're, 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 they're kicking you when you're down and that is not appropriate. So I'm sorry for my rant, but hopefully more people will come up here and speak about what's going on. Thanks. I have three dogs and I got a ticket and they only gave me three months to comply with the citation. They never explained to me how to fix it. I had to turn in a permit for each dog. I completed the whole process before three months, but even before then, I still had the citation. I don't work and I don't have any money. I only want my dogs. I can't do anything and I don't know what to do. How much is the citation for? One, the citation is for 1300 and I completed everything before the three months. Did you, did she, did you talk to the county and tell them you completed everything? Yes, I spoke to the county. I have all the paperwork for the dogs, but still. And the fine is 1200 or 1300 the fine is 1300 Do you have it in writing or anything where they gave you the extension for three months? Okay, you know what? Um, at this point, well... Yeah, she does. She has it in her house. Okay, okay. It could be, you know, unfortunately, it could be just lack of communication because if they gave you three months and you got it done before three months, it should go away. Yes. There is a lot of lack of communication with this situation, and that's one reason we're having this. Um, I do want to say the county has done free spay and neuter clinics here in the city of Indio. The only issue is the amount of citations they're handing out and the amount of uh, free spay and neuter clinics, the ratios are just way out of whack. Um, I called one of the places, they said they only do small dogs. You know, and that's another issue too. Some of these mobile units cannot handle large dogs. Um, our per particular mobile unit, 
um, we'll handle up to 100 pound dogs. And my, my group is called CAN. We partner with Love and All Animals and Animal Action League. And, and so um, you can come to me and we'll talk. I, I do ask for small donations. I charge $25 to alter a dog, 10 for rabies, and 15 for uh, microchipping. Of course, I need donations to make that happen, but I've never turned an animal away yet for lack of funds. And right now, we're at eight, 896 animals as of, oh no, I did nine more cats, so we're a little, whatever. Within, within a year, our group, our organization, we have 11 all animals, Animal Action League, and Fantasy Springs, we're, we're going to hit a thousand animals. And nobody's been turned away for lack of funds. And I know I get bamboozled sometimes, but it's still worth it. Some people try to, you know, to, to wiggle themselves in, but you, you can tell. So, um, you know, if people need our services, I do have a clinic coming up in 2021st. It's going to be at the ABC Recovery Center. They also are fantastic for hosting the, the projects. And then I'm going to have a large one here at Fantasy Springs the end of August, beginning of September. If you have not ca called the county, you need to call the county, hopefully within that first 20 days, and make arrangements to extend, to extend it. They are willing to do that, but you need to call them. They don't, you know, some people don't understand that. Most people are just afraid. Today I got a phone call on my way here, and this person was turning his dog in, a family pet they love, with, because of the 20th day, it was the 20th day. So animal control was there, so I had him stop, and I told him, we'll do all the services for him, just keep the dog, and that was a dog angel. So, it helps. Last year, I came across a family, and this is just a prime example of irresponsibility of some people in this county. I drive along 40th, and I see six chihuahuas in a driveway running around. I uh, pull over and a couple terriers up top, so like they have nine dogs. I knock on the gate and uh, and big gate comes out and his wife. I, I, I become friends with them and I say, can I help you with these dogs? And they say, oh, no, we have, uh, we're fine. And I say, but are they altered? Are they spayed? No, but we got a citation. The animal control came by and knocked on our door, Lisa, and we have a citation that we have to get them all fixed and altered, and we have to get everything done. And they gave us a citation for $2,500. So they said, I said, well, did you, did you get vaccinations? No, we have them in the refrigerator. We never gave them to them. Okay, so it sounds a little irresponsible to me. How can I help? And uh, she said uh, it was Blanca and Ricky, I think. So Blanca says, uh, I don't know. How can you help? So, okay. So then she said, uh, three nights ago, one of our terriers had six babies. I didn't know she was pregnant because she was so mad, and I said, I, I see she's so mad. And, well, we didn't know she was pregnant, but she had six babies out in the yard. I said, okay, let me get a foster for her, for her and her babies, and I'll get two of your, I'll get the rest of your dogs out so you'll be in compliance. So now they were in compliance. So she calls me up and she says, I was at Coachella six times, Lisa. We're in compliance now, but we still have to pay the $2,500 bump. I said, well, that's not fair. I got the babies out, I got the two to Christine Pet Rescue Center, so you're in compliance, why do you have to pay the $2,500? I don't understand. So I called John Welsh, I said, why do they, does Enrique and Blanca still have to pay $2,500 when they're in compliance? They got them vaccinated, oh, by the way, I forgot, I got them all spayed and neutered and saved a pet for free. So every one of the dogs was spayed and neutered, vaccinated, everything. So they were in total compliance. So what I had a problem with was the fact that they still had to pay the $2,500, even though Blanca brought proof that they were spayed and neutered, and her dogs were in pet rescue center. So, uh, and so she had to four, just four. So I, so I called John Welch, and John said, Lisa, if you got a ticket, this is his thinking, and you sell your car 
You still have to pay the fine. You still have to pay the fine. I say, you know, John, I, I, I'm with you on a lot of things, but I don't get this. I just don't get it. They don't have the dogs anymore. They don't have their compliance. It's not right. She's a maid. He's a gardener. Come on. Lower the fine. Come on. Forgive them. So guess what the bottom line is? They went to an event, and they gave a pardon at the event, and they got pardoned, and they didn't have to pay that $2,500. They were pardoned at that event last year. They gave a pardon to those that stepped up, so they didn't have to pay. Rob Miller is now explaining that these tickets are actually like fix-it tickets. This is something he's saying. He told you they were fix-it tickets? Oh, that it's a fix-it ticket. But we just heard the opposite from Lisa, the rescuer, that even if you are in compliance, you still have to pay, because I think the quote, uh, I believe it was Dr. Drusey, also said the same thing. He likened it to a speeding ticket. And he said, if you get a speeding ticket and you don't have the car anymore, you still have to pay the ticket. But there's traffic school. But, yeah, but exactly, you have warning of the law. Yeah, exactly. You know, you knew that to, what the speed limit was. You knew the rules going into the deal. The hey, other thing um, I wanted to add is that Daniel Riverside it? County may have state-of-the-art shelters, but they don't have state-of-the-art mentality. That's the problem. No, they don't. I'm sorry, I don't want to speak to that. They have state-of-the-art buildings, beautiful facility. It's great. Looks great on the surface, but the mentality, no. Uh, this morning, I was handing out flyers about this meeting. And as I was passing the flyers, um, I saw at a house there was an animal control officer. Uh, because the owner had a dog, a Labrador. because his mom is very old and very sick and they were asking him for help. He asked the animal control officer because his mom is so sick and they can't take the dog to get fixed if the animal control officer or the, the group could help him and take the animal to get fixed and the animal control officer said no. And since they couldn't get any help and the animal control officer didn't suggest any groups to help them and they have to take they have to take care of the situation by this Monday. I asked if there was any way they could help them, and the animal control officer said no. These are happy, healthy pets. 
and there's no reason for them to be yanked out of their homes, be thrown in a shelter, or worse yet, people are dumping them on the streets, and some are resorting to killing them. They're killing their own pets. Um, I can't, you know, for me that's hard to believe, but I, I'm not in their shoes, so I don't know. But uh, like most of you, my dogs are my kids, and my husband. Okay. One thing we have to realize is the county works for us. And if you want to change something, you need to get stand up and change it. I personally have been, um, you know, trying to get the citations and work with the county since October. And I guess because I'm not an animal group or whatever, they just, they just aren't willing to work with me. I've asked them, you know, numerous times. Every meeting they've had, I've stood up and asked them. I go, these citations aren't working. I got a citation. Um, we got a ton of money. We got a lot of family in Mexicali. One day we got home and we already had a notice. And um, the next morning, the officer was there. So he had just seen one dog and we have three of them. So my husband told me, well, he's outside. Go outside and talk to him because he didn't know how to talk in English. So I went outside and he said, oh, I just came because I only saw one dog. But now I see that you have three dogs. And I'm like, yeah, I have three of them. So um, I, when I, I have two of them, but two of them, I bought them in Mexicali, and they had their vaccinations and everything. But he said that that was in, that was in no good over here in California. So um, he said, well, you have to take care of them, but I'm gonna give you a break on one of them. I'm gonna let you slide on one of them, but I'm still gonna give you the ticket for two of them. I said, okay, well, thanks. That's all I needed right now. You know, I got a lot of bills and this and that. So um, he said, I'll give you 30 days to fix this problem. Well, one of my dogs was jumping through the fence. We had already put the wire on one of the fence, but he was going on top. He was climbing and still going out. And he said, after you fix them, you fix your problem. If you still jump, then every time they pick them up on the street, we're going to bring them home, but we're going to charge you $150 just to bring them home. And go, okay, good. So I went to Home Depot, we put another wire, and he was still jumping. We saw him in the morning jumping, and it's like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I gave him up, I took him to Mexicali to my mom's home, I said, I can't deal with this no more. And I kept two of them. So the other ones are in Mexicali, but I fixed the problem for the other two, which he only gave me a ticket for one, not, not the other one. So um, I called him up the next morning, I said, well, I took Fluffy to Mexicali, I mean, I can't, I can't handle this no more. And he said, okay, well, just pay the, the rest of them, fix them, and bring me back the slip. And I'm all okay. Well, I did fix Marley, and I did fix Princess, and I took care of them, and I went to the donations and everything. I had to get out of work and fix everything. Well, uh, they still told me, no, well, yeah, you still have to pay the fine for Fluffy. You still have to pay the four hundred dollars. I said, Well, I don't have it no more. I don't have it. So no, it's still there. The ticket is still there. I said, Okay, well, yeah, I can make payments on it. I agree to make payments on it. She said, Okay, you can make payments on the four hundred, but I'm gonna add another twenty just to make payments on it. So I still have the fine. I still can't make the first payment. It's like I don't know what to do. I still have everything there. Do we have a copy of your citation? I have everything. I have the, the officer's name I talked to. I went down to Thousand Pounds to talk to the supervisor. They don't care. They don't care nothing. Now it's becoming a nightmare just to have dogs at home. My daughter, she's 13 years old and she's known these uh, dogs since she was little. And she cries because I told her, I can't handle this. This is a nightmare. They can make deals with you. They'll say, we'll just charge you for two. Where did they get this leeway off? I'm really curious. And I'm wondering where it is in their policy manual. And who gave them the authority to do this? And if they can do this, then they can make the citations go away. I don't get it. I'll have to look through their policy manual because I'm sure I know it better than they do. But they're putting, you know, they give it 20 days, and then if you don't comply, it goes into the collections. And one thing the county did tell me is once it's in collections, there's nothing they can do. Oh, There's always something you can do. Again, remember, they work for us. Yeah. And, and that's what I think a lot of people f forget, is if it wasn't for our taxpaying dollars, they wouldn't be there. It was hard for us to comply within 20 days because I was unemployed at the time. And my mother-in-law is retired. So she lives on a you know, steady check. So it was hard for, her to, um, hard for us to comply within 20 days. But we ended up getting it done 
Um, like I said, it was December. This says second notice dated 3-21-14. So this is the second notice that they have me in collection. We did right away get his shots and his microchip, but to get him neutered, it was impossible. Every time we called, we couldn't talk to anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true too. For all the fines they're collected, it's funny no one's ever answering the phones. Yeah, the number that the, the officer gave us it didn't work. And then I called this, and they told me to fax over all the paperwork that the proof of everything was done. They gave me a bogus fax number because it didn't work. We tried it four different times, so I'm stuck with a bill that's in collection. I have a question for the county. Um, I have a neighbor that has one dog, and he's got a ticket. I wish he came tonight, but he is Hispanic. His English is very bad, um, so it was hard for me to kind of communicate. I did give him the flyer for him to come, but two doors down from him, I have a neighbor that has like 50 cats that I have reported over and over and over to the county, and they do nothing. So these cats are running the entire neighborhood, fighting with my cats that are vaccinated and neutered in spayed. But these wild cats are just running the neighborhood. So again, why are we coming down on this man that has one dog who's always on a leash? The man, the dog is in the house, the dog is never running the streets, but this other neighbor with 50 cats doesn't get any citations, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So that's just my question for the county. Well, cats don't need to be licensed. But it's a it's a health hazard. To no, have. I, I agree with you, but they can't get any money from cats. Right. I, I get what you're saying. I know. I noticed that every time somebody brings up a dog, the loving care that you guys have for this animal is phenomenal. You know, it's like having another baby. You know, and then for these people to do what they're doing is is a little out of hand. I, I can understand. You know, but this is your guys' time to stand up for what you guys honestly believe in. And that's not only standing up for your, your family, it's standing up for yourself. Because they don't want to let you guys know what the law is. They don't want to announce it. They don't want to bring a flyer to you or put it in the mailbox and let you guys know exactly what is going on. Um, the other day we were on the investigation over here in Chapman and there was a gentleman that had told me that um, the animal control came to his house and they took one of his boxers. He had three dogs in the backyard, and they took one of his boxers and they put it down. You know, that, that, that's a Capitan Indian reservation, and that's, that's sobering land. They shouldn't be able to go in there on um, native land and just do that. You know, and that gentleman's not here today, and I just want to speak out for him that that's really wrong. You know, but everybody that, that was here or there and got excited, please come up here and say something because. This lady right here that I've been working with her, she has helped so many people. She helped my mother with five dogs. They couldn't pay, and we brought them to this casino when she first started this, and she did that for my mother. This lady has been an awesome person in my life, and this is one of the first times, you know, if I could stand up for somebody else and encourage you to come up here and tell what they've done to you, that would be good, great, because everybody needs to know what's going on here. You know, we're not the only ones that are involved, it's you guys that they're hurting too. You know, this man to have his dog taken away and put down because he didn't have the money and he couldn't speak up, I'm so great man, that's wrong. My problem is that I have four dogs and I don't know if any of them have been vaccinated because they were given to me when the dogs were already adults. When the officer came to my house, he asked me if I had dogs. I told him I did, even though the dogs weren't making any noise or anything. And what would happen is that if you don't tell the truth, the consequences are always more severe. So I was given a ticket for $1,619. Pues yo, como muchas otras personas, ¿verdad? tengo un trabajo que pues, no es muy bien pagado. Yo trabajo por nueve dólares la hora. Tengo cuatro hijos de familia, mi esposa y yo. 
I work for nine dollars an hour. I have my family, my children, my wife, and my rent, and all that. Y aparte de eso, tengo que mantener los costos de comida y no quisiera pues a deshacerme de ellos porque la mera la verdad. He tenido una experiencia muy bonita con mis perros. And what's and I have to feed my dogs, and I really wouldn't want to get rid of them because truth is, I've had some very nice experiences with them. Since the county has taken over, um, I don't see their tactics are very good. Because when we used to go out, and I was one of the animal crawlers that went out to the city of Indio, um, we would go out and we did licensing for a few years also. And we would go to the houses, and not just saying it's the low income. We had keys to go into the uh, HOAs and all of that to go in and get the other people. And we would go in, and if, if I didn't see a dog, you know, I wasn't going to sight them at all. And even if I did see a dog, the only thing I might give them was just a, a warning to get it done, basically. But I've heard so many horror stories from people that know me in the city of Indio, and oh, there's a lot of them to this day that have come to me, and they still don't know that I was laid off. They think I'm still working with whatever it is, with the county or whoever. Since I have been in animal control for probably eight years, I learned um, that the care of all the animals, everyone cares for their own animals. You know, like I said, I, I don't have a dog at the time, but uh, it's just like a child, completely like a child. That's how everyone that I know in the city of Indio cares for their animals. Yes, you have those one or two that you know are just those people that are very uh, cruel to their animals. But everyone else in the city of Indio I know cares for those animals. So we, I would give them extensions. You know, we know that people can't pay this enormous amount of money. So I'm not, I wasn't going to give them the, the citation right off the bat. They're both culpable in this. They're both responsible for creating this mess and keeping it going. The city of Indio started it by just completely falling down and not providing a simple piece of information. And the counties just sort of picked it up and made it a lot worse. So yeah, the city of Indio, I think they, they should, you know, and also they've had a year now, or nearly a year, to do something about this, and they've chosen to completely ignore it. They don't, I don't see them having a town hall meeting about this. I don't see them wanting to talk about it, neither is Riverside County. Now they're all sort of backtracking and making statements to the media that aren't true and trying to cover their tracks. But they've had nearly a year to fix this problem. They've had nearly a year to talk about it. And they haven't seen fit to do so. So yeah, I mean, I think they're equally responsible, if not, you know, it, it, they definitely started it. And I have done, I'm, I'm actually doing some public records requests because I want to know what this contract says because I find it really interesting that the city of Indio um, pays twice as much for dog licenses as the cities of Rancho Mirage, Indian Wells, and Palm Desert. You're paying $16 in Indio. They're not paying that in Indian Wells and Palm Desert and um, Rancho Mirage. They're paying $8. So I don't know if yours, did any of you get like gold-plated licenses? I mean, is there something different that, that I don't know about? Because that again seems like, this seems like a contract thing. I don't know what the city of Indio was doing when they negotiated this contract. But that's a pretty basic element. I don't even know if they read the contract. Has anyone seen it? I'm going to request a copy of it because I'm seriously wondering if they read it because why did they sell you up? Why would they do that to you? Last time I checked, Indian Wells and Rancho Mirage and Palm Desert really didn't need too much of a break on stuff. When I was laid off, I knew nothing of this thing at all. And I did get water bills, but like I said, in the water bills, was not explained. Not a thing at all. Completely. So, this is my perspective on it. Uh, what I wanted to relay to everyone here. Um, hopefully, everyone speaks out, just like all the gentlemen have said, and everyone else said, speak out because it's not going to. You're not going to talk. Nothing will get done at all. Peter and I both do not have dogs, and we received warning that we needed to license our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> on this, on the fix it ticket for you that you get. It tells you to call the county and if you no longer have the dog. Well, Peter called the dog, the county, and he said, well, don't you want my name or anything? And then he was told no. So to me, it's a waste of taxpayers' money that they're sending somebody to your door and giving them a 
a fix-it ticket if you don't have a dog. Do we really have to uh, neuter our male dogs if you don't want them to? We no called the shelter, we called the county today, and no, it's not an order. It's not, I mean, it's not mandatory, but this is where everything gets convoluted, confusing. They are saying if they cite you, then it's mandatory. So when they give you that first citation, they cite you for something they don't know what's happened. And, and you know, Marla can speak more about it, but no, it's not mandatory. Yeah. So I don't have to get my no uh, pit bull, Well, you said you got a citation. Well, that Marla has to so. It is mandatory. It's actually in the Riverside County Ordinances. I believe it's section 6.08.120. Mandatory spay and neuter. They have a bizarre little clause in there though for enforcement that says that they will, they won't give you a citation for failing to spay or neuter as a standalone citation. They won't specifically say you haven't spayed and neutered your dog so here's the citation. They say that they can only cite you for failing to spay or neuter in conjunction with other violations and they proceed to enumerate 14 other violations which are also the ones that are appearing on these citations. The lack of rabies vaccine, the lack of uh, uh, licensing, and the lack of uh, microchip. So what they're doing is using all of those other alleged violations, whether they're true or not, as a pretext for whacking you with all four violations. So it's a really strange thing it is. There is a mandatory spay neuter ordinance in the county of Riverside, but the enforcement is bizarre, and they're sort of using this as a loophole. There's, you know, since they can't give you a standalone ticket for not spaying and neutering, they're saying, oh, well, what the heck? Let's just let's just hit you with everything. Me llegó el oficial de Animal Control y me preguntó acerca de que se tenía animales. Yo pues inocentemente le dije que sí, no sabía que se tenía que hacer una licencia. So my problem started when the animal control officer came January 24th. He asked me if I had any animals, and I innocently said yes. He said he didn't hear any dogs barking, but uh, he still gave me the citation for the dogs. And I needed to fix them all, and um, loving all animals helped me, so did um, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> Kim was my angel. Ellos me dieron la, la citación y me dieron un mes. Fue bueno porque me dieron un mes para hacer los pigs cada perro. They gave me the citation and they gave me one month to fix each dog. Pero eso fue un día. El día 25 me llegó otro oficial. But that was only one day. The 25th, uh, another animal control officer came. Y no me encontró, me dejó una nota y me dijo que me tenía que comunicar a su departamento. The animal control officer didn't find me, but he did leave me a note saying that I had to contact the animal control department. I called and they said there was no problem, that they were just doing a routine check. Okay, so I left it as it was, and the next day another animal control officer came. Y él me preguntó acerca de los perros y les volví a decir la misma historia. And he asked me about the dogs and I told him the same story. Y él me dijo que iba a regresar, que iba a regresar cuando uh, yo hiciera, mi, terminara mis perros. And he said he would come back when she fixed all her dogs. Y iba a checar cada cuarto, cada baño y cada closet de mi casa and that he was going to check every bathroom, every room, and every closet in my house. The animal control officer did not leave me a card with his name, but if I saw him, I would recognize him. Uh, 
son como mi familia. Gracias a uno de ellos, evité que entraran a mi casa a robar. And right now I'm paying all their licenses and thanks to one of those dogs, uh, one of the thieves did not come into my house. And now the only way I can um, pay for the animals is with all the help. And my way of helping is trying to get to, so that you all understand how to help. And I rescued all of these animals from the street. And it's not fair that all these animals are in the street when it's better to have them in, at the house. And before the first month was up, there came a bill saying that I had to pay. Because if I didn't, they would take me to collections. And the second notice I received the 21st of March. I don't think it's right that when you're doing the things the right way, they behave like that with you. Not every animal control officer is bad. Because the first one that came was very friendly with me. And now that I know my neighbor, I think it's Peter. <laughs> I think it's Peter. He helps me find my dog because I have an escape artist. <laughs> and that's all I have to say, and we have to do something to get all of this to stop. And she still owes me 1619 You know, Gloria came to my clinic in tears, I think it was in January, and she said she had we did as many dogs as we could for her. And we finished it up, and she was so proud of herself when she went down to the animal, um, animal shelter to get the license. I mean, she's done everything right. I told her to first call the county, she got the extensions for a one month per dog, which is still a lot for some people. But she's going to do that, and with my clinic, she was able to afford it. Then she went down to get the license, and she's all excited because she just saved enough money for all the license. And then he put a $25 fee on top of it. And she can only get two licenses at the time. So now she's, I think, I do believe she's got all the license, but she's stuck with the citation because she didn't get it all done, one per month. Yeah, on behalf of the assembly member Perez, um, he had hoped to be here because uh, he got a chance uh, to meet with uh, some of you that are here um, to learn about things that are going on in the county. Uh, he's not new to animal issues. He has a high rating uh, for his votes in Sacramento from the Paw Pack and for the Humane Society. Uh, but he was appalled, uh, just like a lot of you are, to hear about what's going on in the county. So he is committed, uh, if elected supervisor on Tuesday, uh, to work on these issues with you guys because uh, as he does with all his work, um, it's focused on the community. Uh, the county works for you. Your tax dollars are to be able to service you and to help you. And it really, this is not what's going on now. Uh, so uh, on behalf of Assembly Member Perez, uh, thank you for coming out, uh, for voicing your concerns. It's people like you, uh, they're gonna make a difference. Thank you. I saw the news report. There was a woman on there, Spanish lady, and uh, apparently she had a problem in Mexico. Uh, and I read ahead and tracked her down because they took one of her dogs, I believe, and, and uh, that's what brought me here today is because of that. I was going to try to get this dog back, but 
such as Moxipath, and a German Shepherd, or Tobin, or the rest of the group may have been in the audience when you were found in. But they did it, they put it down. Yeah. And I just found that out today, actually. Because uh, uh, when she came on, I talked to her uh, very little English, and uh, very little Spanish, and uh, just did a word for me. I had a co-worker help me out with that. I went ahead and uh, called the shelter. They told me they couldn't give me any information, of course. And uh, so I did a copy of records request. And, uh, and it took them a month to get that to me. Okay, and I checked on it weekly. And about two weeks in, they, they just couldn't find it. So I think this is pretty common. And on this records request, John Walsh, I believe I've seen him on TV too, he made, uh, quoted on this public record request not to give any information out to any caller or anybody that comes by the desk concerning this. So, why? If they just told me on the phone, you know, that they put the dog down, you know, 15 days after it came in, you know, I, I would have been more or less done with it. But also these notes that these officers wrote about this lady, and they also went back uh, a couple months later and well, I don't know how to explain it correctly, but they added details about when they came in with the kid and how the kid showed no emotion for this dog that they, they, that they had to leave because they couldn't afford to take him out. And I thought, what does that have to do with anything? It just, and how do you remember that two months back, you know? You don't. I've been to the Riverside County Thousand Homes operation a couple of times this month for the public records thing. And it was a madhouse. People were everywhere. And I thought, why have so many people here? And they were all there paying fine. And a lot of Spanish, and it was all cash. I was going, man, they're making a lot of money. We want to help you. We want, our goal is to help people keep their pets. These are, there's nothing wrong with these animals. The only, the only wrong thing is they're in the wrong household when the county comes by. We're trying to keep the pets with the family. It is a lot cheaper. My understanding to confiscate a pet, keep it for three days, then kill it. I don't call it euthanasia when you kill a happy dog, a healthy dog. But when they kill it, it's, I, I believe it's like I was told $427. For under 100 we can get it spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and chipped. So the logic in that, I don't know. If I was running a business, I shouldn't be doing it that way. When he came to my house, he was whistling. So my dog is trained, you don't do nothing until they come to the door. So she sat there quietly. He, I came out and I said, can I help you? And he asked me if I had a dog. I could have not told him the truth and said I didn't. But I told him, yes, I do. He asked me if she was fixed. And I said, yes, she's fixed. But you know, what would happen if I can't find her papers? He said, oh, no problems. Just take her to the to the um, animal shelter, they'll flip her over and they'll see that she's been spayed and that's it, you just pay for her being spayed, her license, her microchip and her rabies. I said, okay, that's fine. So I called County of Riverside and I told them, okay, your officer told me that if I could take my dog to, the, to go get a license, all I need to do is just flip her over, see that she has her s surgery and I would just pay for the license her being altered and uh, she said oh no I don't know why he told you that so I had to take her to Animal Samaritan I had to pay $65 for a doctor to check her I had to pay $45 for the certificate oh, plus I had to, she had to get a rabies shot plus she says that the dog was I had, she was getting hives because she's not used to being around other dogs. She's an inside dog. So I had to, I had to buy no medicine for that. And it's ridiculous, you know. And then when I went to go get her license, you know, the lady said, well, where, where's your paperwork? So I gave her my paperwork. And I just told the lady, you know, the officer told me if I bring my dog, all I needed to do was flip her over and you guys could, oh, no. We sit in this chair and we don't move because we're on the computer. And I said, this is ridiculous. Then why did he tell me that? And here I had to pay 65 for a doctor, just less than five minutes to flip her over, look at her, and then 
the nurse comes in and she tells me, oh, by the way, did they tell you that it's $45 for their certificate? She goes, oh, I'll, I'll be nice and I'll give you two. And I say, gee, thank you. You know, their whole thing is they get excited when somebody bangs on the door, shakes the fence, and I want them to act a little aggressive. You know, that's what I have. I went from the chihuahua to the big thing, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the bottom line is, um, is what's happening now, we used to have the city of Indio controlling our animals, and our AAA animal control people would come by and they actually knew the names of the dogs, of your dogs, you know, and they would work with us. If there was a dead dog in the street, they would come and pick it up. The city of Indio kind of got overwhelmed. We had a, the city grew real fast, and then we had a downturn in the economy, and basically it could not keep up with the animals and a lot of irresponsible animal owners. It got out of control. You know, they were running in packs, they were all loose, none of them kept in the house, so we did need some policing. The city of Indio did try the best they could to keep the shelter going, and we were kind of involved in that, but they were overwhelmed. And unfortunately, they decided to turn it over to somebody else they thought could do a, a, a better job. The county, speaking for them, which I cannot do, they are covering a huge area and they are just not really equipped. They're not going to know the people in the neighborhoods. They're out in a neighborhood they've never been in and they're just targeting, which is wrong. And a lot of us are becoming victims. And a lot of low income people cannot afford this. I think one of the solutions that I'm hearing here tonight is for the county to get more involved and help low income people get waivers on these fines. But they do need to come out, identify the dogs, but give the people an opportunity to correct it. I, just today, I've just been shocked by what I've seen from the people that work here at this casino that have come up to me with these tickets that are $2,000. One was $3,000, one was $500. And these people just work here at the casino. There's no way you can afford to do all that stuff along with all the medical things and food and everything else that comes along with being a responsible pet owner. You know, I know because I, I go through it, I see what it costs, you know. And I was shocked that I could not go online and find it in Spanish. All of my neighbors do not speak English. You know, I have to go translate and interpret this stuff to them when I don't even know it. So, um, hopefully, the more we show our presence, and I wish more people would have shown up. I'm kind of surprised not as many people showed up. I talked to more people than showed up that were coming. So I don't know what happened, maybe the heat or something. But you fight for your animals. Remember, the county works for you. And don't let them treat you like criminals. That's one thing that people have to, you have to stand up for yourself. I'm trying to stand up for a lot of you, but I need your help. We need your help. Marley came out here. Not one of us is getting paid to do this. We're doing it because we have a passion for animals and their rights. So um, there's a lot of people in this audience who are uh, rescuers that are not getting paid they spend endless hours doing this out of, their, out of their passion for their heart. I do want to say that this is a problem that can be resolved. It has to stop, but I think we also have to address the amounts of money people have already paid. It's not fair that their money and their dogs were taken. Obviously, it's not going to bring back a whole lot of dead dogs, which really sucks. You know, this is just not the right way to go about things. But it is the absolute responsibility of not only the City of Indio, but the County Board of Supervisors to take control of this situation and change it and to do something. Because the Board of Supervisors does have the authority to do something. They can't just sit idly by and do nothing and act like nothing is wrong. Frankly, they've done that for a long time and it's really time to make some change. And by the way, vote for Mango Perez. <laughs> just a little plug. Um, but they do, it, it's their responsibility. They work for you. They have got to protect you. They have to protect your animals. You don't work for them. You pay their salaries. Why do you have to pay these penalties for no reason on top of it? It's just not right. So you have to communicate with them. You have to flood their offices. Flood the county supervisor's offices. Plug up their phone lines. Plug up their fax machines. Emails. Everything. Keep them responsible. Hold them responsible and make them fix this problem. Because it's not going to go away on its own. We've already seen that. So thank you for coming. And thank you. Thank you to Tennessee Springs for allowing us to be here.